Ladies and gentlemen, we have been on a mission the past week to find the most incredible viewer game submissions and make videos out of them. I appreciate all of you for sending me such wonderful games, just pure chaos, violence, um, and it's all uncensored. It's the most beautiful part. You know, you can't censor chess moves. So without further ado, allow me to introduce to you our protagonist for today, Kevin. Kevin sent me this game. Kevin is from South Korea. At least that's what, you know, Kevin's flag on chess.com says. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you basically, what you see on the internet is always 100% true. So Kevin is obviously from South Korea. And Random 800 Dude, his opponent, is from Poland. Now, both of these players are 800. And this is the probably the best game of chess I've ever seen until the next video that I make. So here we go. E4. Uh, we have the evaluation on bar, uh, bar on for this one because <sighs> E5. Knight c3, good. Vienna, good start. Clearly a proud owner, right? e4 course, bishop c5. This is a good move. Uh, this move is actually a bit more flexible than the other knight moves, because if knight f6, white might have been pl planning the Vienna gambit, and obviously random 800 dude doesn't like the Vienna gambit very much, so random 800 dude develops the bishop to c5. So now we have bishop to c4, and what Kevin is hoping for is to get the copycat variation, obviously. And then there is queen g4 with some kind of nasty ideas over here to g7. But um, in the game, we have knight f6. This is actually quite a good move order. Now here, what white should do is either go back to traditional knight f3 or prepare the move f4 with d3 and f4. But Kevin is not an individual who wants to take it slow. All right, Kevin wants to get right into the action. He's a first date kind of guy. Plays the move f4 right away. Now, f4 is not necessarily a bad move. However, Kevin's follow-up is pretty terrible. Um, f takes e5. Now, this is basically a non-starter. Um, if you're going to play the Vienna with the move f4, at least play d3, do not take on e5. Do not take on e5. This pawn needs to go up. And what you really want to get is a position that looks kind of like this. Not right away, not right away, but, you know, you want to create the connect four, use it as a wall to break out the bishop, and then knight f3. And you can't castle in a lot of these lines, so you have to play knight to a4 to get the bishop. That's what a lot of beginners forget. Y'all study like four moves of your opening and go, I am the world champion now, and then don't actually remember how to play it whatsoever. So f takes e5 is not a good move, d takes e5, and this is really why it's not a good move, is that now you have nobody to combat this bishop, and you've allowed out this bishop on g4. So position's pretty unpleasant. Kevin quickly realizes that, and plays the move h3. h3 is, a, is simply an incredible move. Um, I love this move. And now black got, gets overzealous with this pin, bishop, uh, knight, queen, and plays knight to d4. Now we see the evaluation bar immediately skyrocketing. That is because in this position, the pawn is simply attacking the bishop, which is actually kind of fascinating to me that black moved the bishop there and a move later, two, well, two moves later had the bishop attacked and just completely disregarded the bishop completely. I just, I mean, of course you take this and then you put the knight on d4. And this is good because now white is probably forced to go back to d1. So, okay, knight d4, Kevin takes, knight takes, and in this position, there is just a very clean way to win. Um, and probably you should just take on d4. Because now your queen is opened. And essentially, if you've won some material, you should immediately look to simplify. And for example, if queen takes d4, queen f2 is made. But not if you take the knight, actually. Allowing the queen in here is completely fine. Now you're up two pieces, and you're probably going to win the game. Or hang mate. There's no in-between at the 800 level. So, um, after knight takes g4, uh, Kevin realizes, listen, I haven't developed my bishop yet, let me go bishop g5. Now, bishop g5 is an awful move, um, and it's an awful move because uh, it attacks the queen, but what's worth more than a queen? A king. And you only are able to play this move because the bishop is attacking the queen and it's protected by the knight. But if I kick the chair out from underneath you with knight takes f3 check, you're going to be in some trouble. It's gonna be bad news here. This is not. This is not what we want. Now you would say, "Would love you just F takes G." Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm. Listen, I'm. I'm not so sure you want to get involved in all this. All right, you're safe. I understand the machine is showing one variation for you to play queen e2. I don't trust these folks. I trust these folks to do something like this, okay, and get mated. So let's just be very careful. I don't like to move bishop g5, but. Black responds with a blunder of their own, and we're back up to plus six. We're back up to plus six. Now Kevin evacuates. I, I've been using that word incorrectly, by the way, apparently. So 
Now in this position, it's back to plus 1.5 because rather than taking on F3, black can jump in with the knight and this is terrifying. This is like, you gotta look for your opponent's moves that put you under pressure because these two pieces would go and attack C2. This is very scary. At this point, if you play the move queen to D2, uh, now you are just losing. You're just losing because I'm breaking in with my horses. So bishop h4, black plays an awful move. This is just horrible. There's no need to trade when you're losing. If you're down material, you need to go try to like break stuff apart. G takes f3, and here black plays g5, which again just makes utterly zero sense, because what's going to happen is we're going to get f takes g4, g, g takes h4, and you're just trading all your pieces. But Kevin is a man of principle. Kevin sees the bishop pair. He has both bishops. And he saw in a YouTube video that the bishop pair is good, so he saves the bishop pair. I don't hate this move. I don't hate this move to the point that it's actually black who completely forgets about a second piece on the g4 square. That takes skill. Black is extremely skilled, okay? Hanging one piece on the g4 square is bad, but hanging two pieces on the g4, now that is impressive. Now, Kevin's got a plus five advantage. Obviously, he's gonna just take this home. He's gonna impress the Gotham audience. He's up a knight and a bishop. Uh, Although for one pawn, although that is the pawn. Now, here black begins uh, what's known as hypermodern counter counterplay, playing the move f5. f5 is a fascinating idea, uh, looking to open up the position. Uh, Kevin, very principled, takes it and is now up two clean pieces with a connect four, with rook h7, with queen h5 on the way. Now, rook to h8 played. And at this point, probably just like bishop e6, bishop e5 to suffocate the queen, queen h5 check, and black resigns. Kevin takes on e5. I love that move. It's a great move. Rook to g8. And here, he must have had his eyes on the pawn for a while because he takes. Um, you'll notice the eval bar goes from plus 32 down to plus 24. That is because he has a bishop. He can just take the rook and have a 12-point material advantage. He chooses not to do that, instead taking on h7. And here, black basically realizes, well, the only hope I have in this game of saving it is to push my pawn. Um, and if that pawn can go three more squares, I will have a queen. That is not bad way of creating counterplay. Um, now, once again, that rook is still 100% hanging. Uh, you are also two moves away from queenside castle. If the pawn goes to g3, then queen h5 check, queen f7 is mate in two. Um, and yeah, I mean, you have a lot of ways to win this. Now, here Kevin plays an interesting move, backs up for a second. Now, we see the eval drop from plus 30 to plus 17. That's about 50% decrease. Rook h6 doesn't necessarily blunder anything, but it also does nothing. So black continues on with the plan of g3, at this point blundering what would be a forced mate in 9. Now, I don't necessarily expect an 800 to play forced mate in 9, but I do expect an 800 to either take a rook or give a check or give a check. And here Kevin plays queen e2. Okay, I don't hate that move either. Um, black plays g2. Black is, is on the cusp of promotion. Now, again, we can go queen h5 check here. Um, at this point, long castles is played, and black pro must have realized that, hmm, I can make a queen, but maybe he can take it, and I'm not very happy about that. Now, it's still an advantage, but it's, oh, oh, never mind. It's actually not an advantage anymore after rook takes g1. But black is greedy. Black wants a full queen, and black does not want to give the queen away. So, black plays queen g5 check. See, black is good with the queen diagonals, as opposed to our protagonist. This is kind of problematic. At this point, white has a couple of options. White can move the king, which is the best move, and basically the only move that keeps advantage above plus five. Uh, there is a hanging rook, but there is also a hanging rook over there, and that rook has just been immortal. Um, and black decides, of course, to take the rook. The rook is free. Now, white, again, um, is like, this needs to be taken. Because at this point, Kevin is only up three points of material. That would get him up five before he has to sacrifice his rook for the pawn. But just like Kevin has a blind spot for the enemy rook, Kevin also, um, after blundering one rook, evidently has a blind spot to his own rook and the bishop on the other side. So we go from maiden nine to after rook g1, bishop takes g1 to blundering two rooks and two moves. Both rooks gone, just gone, cleanly gone. Uh, now it's, it's minus nine. So now black is completely winning. Black not only has a material advantage, black's pawn is also just going to be a queen. There's nothing that you can probably do at this point. So what does Kevin do? Well, Kevin goes, bishop takes c7. You see, Kevin had the bishop on the exact same square and the exact same distance to the enemy rook and still, still does not see this. Still doesn't see it. In fact, if he took on g8 here, there's a chance he also would have taken this. I'm just saying. 
But okay, he got, you know, he gets frustrated. It's like, oh, I lost two rooks. I got to take a pawn. So I'm only down nine points in those recent exchanges. Totally fair. Black plays bishop d4 and is now on the verge of just queening. At this point, finally, it kicks in that he has no way to stomp this, so he probably should give some checks. Now, I love this. And one more thing, you need to give your king breathing room. Your king doesn't really have a lot of breathing room. So, king e7, knight d5, love this. Love the strategy of just attacking the king. Now, at this point, I really would have wished Kevin took his foot off the gas and kind of made this getaway, because he keeps checking the king and just completely forgets that it can be taken in one move. Now, at this point, it is M. 7 for black. M9, M10, it's, it's mate. It's force mate. The only way white delays this game is by making a getaway, and Kevin does exactly that. Now, at this point, according to the engine, it is mate in 5, but it's mate in 5 um, in a completely ridiculous way. Here, there's just a beautiful combination. Uh, G1, king, and like, the, of course, you have to sack your queen. That's what the computer is saying. But here, there's just a beautiful combination. Try to pause and find it, by the way, if you'd like to. It's an incredible combination. Uh, it's this move, queen, a1. Look at that. That is a beautiful, it's a very common kind of tactical motif uh, with queen and bishop. The bishop now pins the, the pawn. So queen a3, king b1, queen b2. Insane, right? Um, now, if, uh, and, and if you don't take the queen, then it's going to be mate in like a move or two uh, with queen b2, etc. So uh, now if, if an 800 finds that you report them for cheating, they get banned like within like six hours or three months. You know, you know how fair play works. Um, so, yeah, like, that was never going to happen in a million years. But A3 is, of course, a very good move, and now you escape. Now, it is mate in 5, mate in 3, actually, but we're not gonna have that. At this point, Black is like, I'm up 12 points of material, I should probably go get my queen some help, rook g2. Don't hate that move at all, it is still most certainly force mate. At this point, Kevin's, uh, fight-or-flight instincts kick in, and he decides to mobilize the queen, right? Look, queen, knight, bishop, all he's got. I mean, he's, he might as well just arbitrarily move it forward. Uh, meanwhile, black um, is knocking on uh, is knocking on the, like the, the door here for this king, right? And um, black's like, you know, I kind of don't like where this queen is. Let me go offer a trade and plays the move queen g6. Now, if you're a strong player, you, you go, wait a minute. Um, can't you just take that with the pawn? You can 100%, that's just pawn takes queen. And it is still a better position for black, who's just lost the full queen and still has advantage. But you see, Kevin was dead set not on taking anything, probably forgetting that this pawn can go like this, but actually going to h8. Now, queen h8 is one of the worst moves I've ever seen in my life. Um, yeah, Kevin, after this game, needs to go review some diagonals, because that is just a full blunder of a queen. That would have left black up 21 points of material for a move. Um, if, if f takes g6 was played, it would have been less. Queen h8 is just not a good move. It, it, I... There's nothing, I, I can't sugarcoat it. It's a terrible move. It's an awful move. Now, king f7. Okay, so at this point, the evaluation goes all the way back up to zero. Why? Well, you see, if you just allow me to take this rook, I will, but there's even better here. You have a zwitschenzug. You have an in-between move. You can take the queen with check, and then you can take the rook. So you would be getting 14 points of material back. All the while, this is actually protecting your king. Two little pawns, like Scapegoat and Yu-Gi-Oh, are protecting you and your life points from just pure obliteration. But Kevin, of course, hasn't seen this, so Kevin takes on the 8, and we're back down to minus 11. Um, at this point, Black plays Rook takes C2. Rook takes C2 is actually, it looks like a great move, because... Um, you're threatening mate in one, right? That's just mate in one. Rook c2, like, you're right there. You're like, oh my god, oh my god, I don't care about anything else. I'm gonna get rook b2. You completely forget that your queen is hanging. But the thing is, folks, you have to understand, when, when your opponent has played a move, you need to kind of get into their head. You gotta go, what are they gonna do? Well, they're obviously gonna check me. Like, you need to... So every move you make either has to protect their threats or make them not able to play those threats. So you cannot play a slow move like rook c2. You always need to be looking for either the right move defensively that stops what they want. Because if you play a move like this, you're just, you're, you're letting them get time. You're not thinking what they can do. So white takes on b7. Now b7 is not the right move to take, but it, it's a check, right? The, the best move is, of course, to take the queen with check. That, that, that's undeniable. Um, you also have like bishop e8, which wins the queen. Queen b7 is not good, and it's not good because, for example, if king f8, now taking the queen does, it, it's not a check. You see what I'm saying? Now, now you get mated. So every move you play needs to be a check. So king to e7, uh, king to g8, sorry. Now at this point, you know, white's got to, um, white's got to be quick. And, um, somebody called me on Skype.
That was so funny. My coach thinks that we have a chess lesson right now, but actually we rescheduled to Friday. Well, that's a blooper for the ages. There you go. Aren't you happy you clicked on this video? All right. So king goes to uh, g8. And um, now at this point, white again can't take the queen. White needs to actually do something so they don't get mated. So what do they do? You got to give a check. Oh, and now it's really stressful because if the king goes to the seventh rank, this is also going to be a check. If the king goes over here, this is also going to be a check. But you know what's crazy? Imagine the king goes back to f8, okay? Watch this. Knight g6 is check. Hmm? But watch this move. Because if takes, this is why every move has to be a check. Rook b2, king a1, rook b5. And you are discovered checked with queen hanging. Are you kidding me? Now, again, they see that. You report them for cheating. You move on. Um, so knight e7, king f7. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we go from maiden 1, maiden 2, minus 10, king f7. And white realizes that they can take the queen with the knight. This is even better now. Why? Because the king has one, two moves. One of these moves survives a little while longer than the other, and bishop c4 would come, and white would be in a situation where the rook would have to take. But you see, black tries to escape and run for it. And white finds queen to e7 mate. Isn't that just the best thing you have ever seen?